You know, pinball has made history in its own way, appearing in arcades with one concept, to get a high score. But it wasn't always like this because its history is far more complicated to decipher than we imagine. Pinball's true history actually began one year after the Great Depression with a little game called Bagatelle. Yes, this thing right here is where pinball began. If you look at it today, you'd either be confused or laugh at its primitive design. We can all thank David Gottlieb's 1931 Baffle Ball for helping out those who needed a little entertainment during America's worst economic crisis. Of course, as time went on, the designs improved, new features were added, and more bells and whistles were added. When 1944 rolled around, Harry Williams, creator of the Contact Table, opened up his own company, Williams Manufacturing, in Chicago, Illinois. Of course, pinball wasn't Williams' claim to fame. They also brought many arcade classics like Defender, Joust, Robotron 2084, and of course, Mortal Kombat and NBA Jam. The latter two games came after Williams acquired Bally Midway. I could go on and on, but the real question is, what does this have to do with my review of Epic Pinball? To put it shortly, if it wasn't for Bagatelle, we probably wouldn't have pinball as we know it today, be it physical or digital. Okay, so video pinball isn't far-fetched, but does epic pinball bring, pardon the pun, to the table the same feeling of a real pinball table? The answer for the most part is yes, Epic Pinball was developed by Digital Extremes and published by Epic Games and released in November of 1993. Interesting thing to note is that this game was sold in packs of three. You could buy each pack separately or buy all three for a slightly lower price. What's really unusual is that this game was both a critical and commercial success for Epic. Now the ultimate question, has this game aged well? The answer? Not really. Let's start with pack one. The first pack consists of Android, Pot of Gold, Excalibur, and Crash and Burn. Before I go on, let me make it clear that this is going to be a three-part series and each table will have its own score. A few things each table has in common is that the physics actually feel like real pinball tables. Another is that the tables themselves also look really nice. And the cherry on top is the soundtrack which really helps bring the atmosphere to life. And the best way to start is with Super Android or Android or whatever. I should mention that each table, like in real life, has its own objectives and goals. Super Android is about bringing an android to life, like Frankenstein. Before it slips my mind, one other thing about pinball is that you have to rely on skill and a little bit of luck to get that high score. And it's pretty easy to do on Super Android. No wonder why it was the table featured in the shareware release. As you progress, you'll be given new tasks required to bring your android to life. Every once in a while, a virus would appear, but it doesn't really do anything. Just flush it out and get some big points. The Super Android table gets 4.5 pinballs out of 5. The next table is Pot of Gold, where the objective is to reach the other end of the rainbow and get the Pot of Gold. The only way to do so is to progress through each color. You start at purple, and when you complete the objective, you advance to the next color. It doesn't start off hard at first, but once you get going, then it gets harder. Sometimes it's luck, other times it's skill. And most of the time, it's unexplained. While this wasn't as enjoyable as Super Android, Pot of Gold still gets enough credit for being good and 4 pinballs out of 5. The next table is Excalibur, which is named after the famous sword that King Arthur wielded. What's interesting to note is that the design resembles a pinball table from the 1970s. This time you have to spell Excalibur by hitting the red and blue buttons on each side. This table takes more luck than skill to accomplish that goal. This is the most difficult of the tasks to accomplish out of the first 4 tables. And unfortunately, this also brings Excalibur's fun factor down. But Excalibur is alright in its own accord and gets three pinballs out of five. And last up is Crash and Burn, a racing-themed pinball table. Ironically, the objective is opposite of the table name, and it's not to crash and burn. Weird. Anyways, the objective is to race around the table in hopes of getting first place. But that's easier said than done because of one major design flaw. If you notice how the first three tables launch the ball like normal, this one actually curves out, which makes it easy to lose the ball and you don't get a redo. And that's what brings this table down a few points. This was my least favorite of the first four and it gets two and a half pinballs out of five. Part two will cover the next four tables, Magic, Jungle Pinball, Deep Sea, and Enigma.